we ready to move on to Andor? Yeah. So that's what I finished today. I, I haven't seen episode, episode seven, but whatever. I'll I be am old very away. behind on that. Just watch the first episode. Oh, geez. It's so good. <laughs> I mean, it's like this comparison has been made a lot. It's a lot like Rogue One. Well, which, I hope so. Well, I, yeah. Uh, more broadly speaking is like Star Wars that's about the little people and not about like the Skywalkers or Vader or any of this shit. It's just about like the average rebel on the ground is the Star Wars that I love. Um, and I know I'm not the only one who feels this way. Mm -hmm. Like there's so many, so many of the animated series have done really well with this, but I, I feel like Star Wars Andrew... in the city. Cause like so much of the original trilogy was, set on more remote planets. I was about to say, this is something planets. I've liked about Andor so far. Is yeah, it's show that... all in a cityscape. Like... No, it's not. <laughs> or, or it's not, you know what I mean. Like, it's more, it's not Tatooine that's, it's not you know, Tatooine. it's a lot more It's, a it's lot about more a populated. city boy. It's about a city Yeah, boy. that's what I meant to say. A lot of it happens so far on the mountains of Alderaan, and it's like, it's made me feel and think so many things in the same way Rogue One did about, like, what effective rebellion looks like. Um, Saw Gerrera. Saw Gerrera gets a shout-out. Fully gets a shout-out. Um, yeah, Nemec from the series, like, and his manifesto. Saw Gerrera wasn't in it? I thought he was in the preview for it. No, I haven't seen him in it. He's not in it yet. He's He's been mentioned. He's not in it. I think he will be in it later. What what I hope from it, because you know how the Star Wars loves to redo the same scene over and over and over again, yeah. like especially with Order 66, where yeah. we've seen that like about seven times now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I really want the scene from Rebels to be live action where it's Saw Gerrera confronting Mon Mothma. We're going to get it. We're going to get I, it. I, I would literally I really think we are. pay all the money that I have in the world for that to be live action. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're going to get it because we've already got some like really cool questions about rebel leadership and mm -hmm. what really is the way to go about this. Um, Which if people paid very close attention to my last speech I gave to the Libertarian Party at their convention, <laughs> I totally ripped off what Saw said to Han Mothma, almost uh -huh. word for word. I caught that. I don't know how many other people did. <laughs> I caught that. <laughs> I totally ripped that off, almost word for word. <laughs> I love that we're seeing, like, God, again, we get to see, like, what a, a rebellion actually looks like. Mm -hmm. And it's not easy. Sometimes your friends are actually your enemies. And mm -hmm. everyone's in it for a different reason. And Yeah. Sometimes you got to hire a mercenary to get Sometimes you got to hire a mercenary. This is this is my deep cut about it. It's like all the conversations about the Kurds like benefiting from U.S. airstrikes and stuff like that. I was just thinking. Really? That's really? Perfect <laughs> comparison. Yeah, no, I was just thinking that war is dirty and you war have to... War is dirty. You can't play clean. Can. You can't play but clean. But when you're really trying to, you know, engage an insurrection against a big enemy like that, you gotta take allies where you can get them. And especially, but like, in that sense, when they're really that outnumbered. And I mean, shit, even before Andor... Like, even before he actually actually joins the rebellion, just as someone whose back is pressed against the wall, he's relying on a lot of people that, you know, yeah. aren't necessarily on the same page as him with everything that he does. I think there's a beautiful illegalist message in the first couple of episodes, right? Of like, this is just as much of a rebellion. This is just as valuable it doesn't matter that he's not a manifesto writing rebel. You know, like he says, I sneak into their houses, I spit on their food, and I take their stuff. You know, like, how much more can you fight someone? How much more, you know, deeply and in intimately can you get in their business than that? I love that we are seeing, like, you know, again, same as Rogue One, there's so many different ways to be a rebel. What know? I like, too, is, I mean, you've always seen... 
you know, the cantinas and stuff like that in the movies. But the first episode, you basically start out, in a, you start out in a brothel. Yeah. Like, sure, we've seen Jabba with his, you know, dancers and all that. Like, we've seen sex workers in Star Wars, but yeah, not like that. You know, and the fact that he was That's asking the other about key. his sister potentially being a worker there yeah. and not sounding judgmental about her choice of profession, mm-hmm. but just trying to find her. Right. And, right. you know, it's really cool that they established that, hey, his sister might be a sex worker. Who knows? It made me feel so many things about, like, what it means to properly be part of an insurrection and the fact that, you know, when he lands on Alder, 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 Alderaan, the other one, and, like, everybody else is doing this thing of, like, we don't know you, and we have to, like, count on you for our lives. And, like, I've been there when I'm the Clem, you know, I'm the Clem yeah. in, in somebody's basement going, well, th- these people vouch for me. You know, I'm here. I'm going to... I'm going to do what I can. I don't trust you either. <laughs> we all got to pretend like we trust each other for five minutes and get a thing done. <laughs> the part that really hit me is like, I had a real bad falling out with a, a friend who's a ex-con recently. And like this whole idea of like, hey, you, you're, you're going to be working with ex-cons and there's, you know, you're going to be working with sex workers. You're going to be working with people who have had to lie a lot, mm-hmm. you know? And so we are used to distrusting and there's a certain amount that you should trust. And there's a certain amount that you shouldn't. And it's so hard to figure out what it is, especially when you're in like the illegalist insurrection sort of space. And it's like, I know you have to lie to everyone else. You know, how do I know you're not lying to me? And I know people feel that way about me too. Like, I'm sure they do. I'm sure. they Yeah. And there's sometimes where, you know, if it's someone, if you're working with people, you know, doing stuff like that, there's times where not telling people stuff is the more trusting, you know, trustworthy thing to do. And if it's someone who is actually on your side, they know you will keep stuff from them and they won't pry. You know and I mean? I've even had that with partners. It's like, okay, if we're participating in stuff, I don't want to know what you're doing and vice versa to whatever extent, if we're both, you know, working on shit together, that's one thing. But if we're not like, don't tell me everything. My wife and I kind of have like a de facto split between, you know, it does support work and we, we don't talk about what I do, you know, Uh Um, there's certain parameters around what I'm allowed to do and not, but Beyond that, I mean, it's just so much safer not to talk about it. Uh Um, Andor is getting me deep in the feels in the same way Rogue One did around just like, this is what it's like to actually do insurrection. But the other thing I think has been really, really well portrayed in the series is what fascism actually looks like. Like we're seeing imperial fascists run into, you know, not just have a well-run machine that always works exactly the way they think, but have these problems of bureaucracy, have these problems of status, have these problems of, you know, how hard it is to actually coordinate things when your whole system is built on a political ideology that is about power and not reality, <laughs> you know? Political scenes in this in this series have not felt long and drawn out like the prequels, but have felt more real than you know than any other movie or you know any other movie or tv show that i can think of as far as just the scenes where you have the empire's bureaucracy just sitting down and dealing with stuff yeah no the politics of it just feels so much more real and and or realistic and their portrayal. The where I feel like I could, write, I could write something about it as like a guide to insurrection, you know, yeah. through <laughs> through what happens in Andor. I really like how much they realize that they just have to, you know, they don't know who's an agent, who's, you know, gonna. And I mean, shit. You can't. It, it's you know, so Pat, Cassian was turned in by his, you know, by his friend's fucking boyfriend. Right. right. You know, and then when he realized, uh, yeah, 
husband. Your point partner, and, regardless. Yeah. And when he went to, when he realized what he had done and saw that his partner was getting, you know, fucked up over it by the pigs, like he tried to go, you know, intervene, which I'm surprised he didn't be like, I gave you the tip or something while he was running up there. But he just, he got because it was clear he gave the tip for reasons that he wasn't in control of, probably. And, you know, still try to do the right thing later. And it's just, again, that's what insurrection's like. People are going to fuck up. People are going to you know? talk. <laughs> well, he also just, he knew, I mean, that's the thing, is he overheard shit that he shouldn't have overheard, which was a thing, you know, that's, that's an important thing about security culture is you can't just... You have to think about who's around you, including. What did we learn about? What did we learn about comms in this series? Yeah, don't bring your comms with you. Nothing that you don't control. Period. Nothing that you don't. This is why I love Nemec. Oh my goodness! I just, I've been that like kid who's writing the manifesto, who like knows all these things about using use the old school tools because the old school tools aren't being monitored. And he's got this great line about like, we're so reliant on the empire's technology because it's what's here, you know? And for us, it's like, whether that's Facebook or Gmail or any of these, we're so reliant on this, but we have to think about how to do things without it. And like, for me, it hit way, way, way deep into my heart because as of, I don't know, five days ago, I now live in rural Northern Michigan. Part of the reason we moved here is to like learn how to do the things that we've forgotten that we forgot, right? The things that actually sustain us, the things that actually allow insurrection to happen. They're not having a comms on you, right? <laughs> I think one of the lines that really, I mean, there's a lot in Mimic stuff that really got to me, but when he talks about, you know, when he's talking to, to Cassian and he's like, I was writing about you, you know, well, not you, Clem, like, not, the, right. not your real name anyways, but like, he's just talking People about like the you. role of mercenaries, yeah. you know, within there. And he's like, you know, weapons are a tool. And when you, you know, use them, you're, you know, by extension, you are a tool. It's how we utilize you. And when the empire has no morals, we have to use all that we can. And, you know, that's very badly summing up what he said, but it was just like... I think that's a great summary. Yeah. yeah. We don't have these things. <laughs> oh, and that was, <laughs> that was very real of like, okay, we can't always think about the ethics of everything. Sometimes we just have to survive and use what tools we have available. And if there's a mercenary willing to help us, well, we can't really worry about what their morals are. We just need to use oh, the tools to the hand you. fight an enemy yeah. that is, oh, no, no, no. you know, an enemy that is also just doesn't have morals, period. At least not any that are, you know, productive to society <laughs> if they see it. Great fucking series. I need to watch more. We're only halfway of, through. I see a lot of similarities with Rings of Power, which I hope we get more into at some point on a future stream, but one of the big similarities I see is just like the pace of development is slow. And I loved earlier, James, when we were talking about Isom, and you're reading that review that's like, well, it's really quickly paced. And it's like, mm -hmm. well, why it's do we not want a fairly good thing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> In my experience, that's usually really bad. Yeah, for a hundred page comic, it was pretty brisk. Like, is that a good thing? Like it depends on the context. That can be like, oh, it reads so well that you know you you fucking finish it fast. Or it could be, oh, it's really fast paced, but not well written. It can be either of those things, depending on context. But it seems like when they said that the writing was that badly, yeah. Or that bad, then yeah. But the and packaging then, was on the good. other hand, Andor. But glossy, heavy, paper. Glossy, heavy paper. Yeah. glossy, heavy paper. Glossy, heavy paper. Glossy, heavy paper.
Well, Andor both had the glossy, heavy paper and the good writing. How would we rate the shipping, though? Well, it came on Disney. I don't. Plus, I do not like the shipping at all because it was released episodically, which is why I haven't watched it because I right. do enjoy binge watching shows when I watch, and because of the shipping with the way Disney is releasing shows. I kind of like to wait until I have a number of them and then I can sit down and watch them. So I'm going to rate the shipping a Ooh. one out of 10. I don't also, like Disney being the shipper either. Most of these shows do not get physical media since they're streaming shows. So the question right. is, is, I mean, it's Star Wars, so they could bank off that and, you know, do a full DVD, Blu-ray release, whatever the hell we're on now, like. I doubt it because we haven't seen that with the MCU and the MCU's just right, as big of a property. Like they're not going to do it. So that means if Disney Plus shuts down, we lose Andor. But we might get games, which they're already working on. It keeps going back and forth with whether it's going to happen. The uh, Knights of the Old Republic remaster. So will it be canon to the current canon though? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> 